Um, so I'm Shane Masters, I'm the latest uh, member of the South Australian Venture Fund with uh, David and Alex, wherever they are. And actually we have two more uh, junior members than me, or recent members, which is uh, Bass and uh, Jack, who came in for work experience today. So, um, so I guess this, this panel um, is, is where it's not about Artesian or, or the South Australian Venture uh, Capital Fund. Um, it's about three um, startups with very different and interesting journeys that hopefully their stories can help inspire or at least give give some uh, a roadmap to all you other founders out there in the room that are, are heading down the journey of building a business and, and finding the right partner and capital for to, to help grow your business. Um, so if Holly, Brenton, and Flavia, if you want to come up and so welcome to Holly McDade from Platform. <laughs> Flavia Tanad Narabi from Fleet, and Brendan Cooper from Five Coast. So whilst, whilst they're getting ready, I'll just I'll give you a quick background about myself. So I grew up on the Air Peninsula, um, and have spent the last went, went to university here and spent the last fifteen years um, overseas working for. Um, growth minority growth capital funds, so a bit more on the PE side, um, and keeping in, in in tune with the French team. The last three years I was living in France, so five weeks back in South Australia. Very happy to be back, and hopefully some of the contacts. Europe for my um, and then we'll talk about it through the panel. But yeah. your your uh, experience with raising capital, the good, the bad, and any tips for for other startups hoping to replicate what you've built. Well, so I have to start there. So I right, already two glasses of champagne. So I'm like, ooh, okay. <laughs> there is like not a lot of air in this room. So I'm like, oh, it's time for a nap. Okay, so. Um, I'm Italian by background, and uh, I've been in South Australia in Adelaide now for um, um, seven years. Um, listen, my story is a little bit, what I love about today that I don't know many of you, so it excites me because I always talk to everyone. Everyone knows my story. They're getting so bored, but maybe some of you don't know me, so I'm very excited to tell the story again. Okay, so I, I'm a rocket scientist by background, um, love space, love rockets. This is what I started. This is what I've done in European space agents in Europe. And then I met um, my husband and he was from Madrid and then I moved here. Okay, so it was an interesting movement for me it was very family related but it started a big change in my life uh, when i came to adelaide it was seven years ago as so i can promise you that the startup scenes was very different than now uh, very very different so what's happening now is actually quite exciting um, i i raised two little kids that are still alive and doing good um, so i think i'm nailing it okay but in the meanwhile, I was getting a little bit bored and I wanted to keep working in space. Uh, space is my love. Um, so I really didn't know what to do. I didn't have a, a, a passport, so I couldn't work in defense. I couldn't work anywhere. And I was pretty high level um, in space in Europe. So for me, it was like, okay, what's now? So I started a couple of startups, okay? Um, just, just a summary of this. Um, I love space. So any startup that I needed to start was a tech startup and a space tech startup. So it's not that easy. So I don't know if how many of you know that since a couple of years, Australia's got a space agency and the space agency is here. This is very new. So when I came here, there was no space agency. There was zero. So there was no space startups. There was nothing. So I remember saying to everyone, I should just start a space startup. It's going to be cool. And everyone was like, not a chance that you can do it outside Silicon Valley. And that was pretty, pretty annoying since my partner is from Adelaide and other ladders do not want to move outside Adelaide ever. So I had to build it here. Uh, the past five years, I'll give you a couple of highlights. So Fleet, the company that I'm CEO and co-founder is five years old, uh, just turned five at the end of August. We have raised more than 20 million so far. 
in uh, two, three rounds, so we went very fast. We are building a constellation of small satellites, satellites as big as a shoebox. We are putting hundreds of them around Earth for um, Internet of Things connectivity. So we connect devices. So we are creating a network, communication network around the world for device comms. Why device comms? Mainly for industrial IoT. That is the most boring sentence ever, but it's actually quite exciting. So it's what's happening in mining, in oil and gas, in energy, in agriculture, so at the digital transformation of all data, okay? So I think Fleet is one of the biggest space startups in Australia, uh, probably in the world. So it's actually super exciting. We raise money with a lot of great investors. I never raised before. I was a super nerd. And uh, now I run a business that uh, one year ago had eight people. Now it's got 45. It's going to have 150 people next year. It's just growing. We launched satellites with SpaceX. So it's real satellites. It's not fake satellites. It's a real thing. And we actually now getting to a lot of revenues. It's actually very exciting and, and we work all around the world and it's all been done from here. So I've been through the angels, the series A, the C, the series A, and now I'm approaching series B. So I'm, I am learning as all of the people here, probably a little bit further down the sum and also trying to raise in a very complex topic that is space, but nothing more than that. Okay, um, I guess just to share my journey, a bit like Flavia, originally um, from Norfolk in England, but uh, we swapped our very, very small house in London about five years ago and bought a vineyard in McLaren Vale, which was an amazing thing to be able to do. So I kind of uh, parted ways with my old world of um, running um, interactive TV campaigns and running a Facebook uh, game startup and then became a grape grower. So massive sea change. Platform started because of my frustrations becoming a grower. Like in, in viticulture, actually most tractors that you have going up and down vine roads are really small, simple machines with no technology on them. So I was wanting to use kind of imagery from space to direct my contractors to carry out work where I could see and my agronomist could see that it was needed most. But we had, because there was no tech on these tractors, there was no way to effectively communicate out to people carrying out work. So we started Platform very organically and think of it a bit like a kind of a sat nav at, at its simplest instance that I can tap out um, where I want work carried out on my vineyard. I share that with people who are doing work on our vineyard and on their phones, it, like they can, as they're going up and down vine rows, Platform is telling them to either start work or stop work or change rate. So it started totally organically just for ourselves and we hacked it, to, hacked it together with one of my co-founders. Um, but it started to get picked up by other growers in our region. So it started to get picked up by the contractors, then some quite major wine brands like Taylor's and Accolade and Casella's started to use it. And then we got accepted onto a startup program in Melbourne called Sproutex which Artesian are actually a supporter of. So that took us up kind of an, another level up. Um, then like really in the last six months, we've become like really focused on what is the global opportunity. So there's like 30 million simple tractors out there in the world and they can all be made smarter just using a farmer's mobile phone. And the World Economic Forum, like they've done some projections, like basically no farmers really outside of Broadacre in a few countries actually carry out work with precision. They do the same thing to the, all of their land, irrespective of its, of its variability. And if the WEF said that if 25% of farmers start to actually like use phones uh, to carry out work with precision, that would result in those farmers saving annually a hundred billion dollars a year on inputs that they don't need to put out. So precision agriculture is all about putting the right inputs at the right time, at the right rate, in the right place. And this combined with space and what space can do, like making these devices ultra accurate, giving us imagery, crop health imagery of our vineyards, where every pixel is now a vine. So things from satellite can pick out every single one of my vines and tell me how healthy it is. And it, it now does that multiple times in a season, it's 10 times cheaper than it was 
five years ago with the, when we became growers. So like this holds the key to basically transforming agriculture. If those same 25% of farmers do actually just start working smarter, that would result in about 300 million tonnes more food, which will feed a couple of billion more people on this planet uh, and, and ultimately help the industry to be more sustainable. So um, yeah, that's, that's, our, that's been our journey. We jumped on a plane uh, just before COVID and went to California and met SVG Ventures, who is along with Artesian are a really active ag tech investor over in the US. So that's helped us to kind of take the next step We've had some amazing support here from the SA Startup Fund, which links into a deal we've done with Kubota tractors. So Kubota supply really, like Kubota tractors are extremely reliable, but they're typically small, simple tractors. And they realize that the phone holds the key to making their customers carry out smarter work. So yeah, the SA Startup Fund supported us there. Also, um, Primary Industries South Australia has helped us to um, put in place a really exciting very collaborative and open project in the wine industry to basically map every vine row in Australia using the same technology and bringing in that talent that's mapped the world's roads. So the people that basically have created that open street maps architecture, which powers Uber and like Ford, like Ford Mobility and Lyft, we're bringing that talent now over into viticulture to apply that, to basically put those same building blocks in place in the Australian wine industry. And I'd say like quiet, it's very quietly, like, but quietly we are doing absolutely world leading things at the moment in certainly in Viti Tech in Australia. So we just don't shout out enough about it, but, but there's kind of great things happening underneath the surface and things are really starting to come together. Uh, I'm Brenton Cooper and uh, I'm a little bit different. Um, unlike Flavia and Ollie, I was born in Adelaide. I, I did leave for a little bit, but I came back. Um, so I'm CEO of Fivecast. Uh, what does Fivecast do? Well, our mission is to enable a safer world. And we do that by working with our customers to analyse conversations in the online world. So we work with uh, um, agencies in law enforcement, national security, defense intelligence, border protection, and beginning to work in corporate security. Um, and we use essentially artificial intelligence to uncover risks that the agencies can then, then deal with the threat. So our, our journey, um, there's, there's really two views of our journey. The positive view is that we're the poster child of Australia's uh, innovation ecosystem. The negative view is that we're a junkie for grant funding. So I'll take the positive view, uh, but it, it did start quite a long time ago. Um, about eight years ago, I, uh, with a few others, uh, thought about how the national security agencies weren't really making the best use of artificial intelligence in their day-to-day -day business. And so we launched uh, a cooperative research centre. So it was quite a big cooperative research centre, five years, quite short, but very focused on innovation and commer commercialisation. And in mid-2017, we spun Fivecast out of the Cooperative Research Centre. Um, we then went on and we went to uh, some of the people in the room here today, ca uh, cap in hand, tech in SA, and got a, a small export uh, market development grant, or ex export uh, development grant. Um, we then also applied for an accelerating commercialisation grant, uh, got about 500,000 through, through that process to, to build a, sort of a, a bulk uh, threat assessment platform that's uh, now now being sold, which is fantastic. Um, and then after that, we had to exit the CRC properly, uh, and we raised some money. So we raised four million dollars through the SAVCF and Main Sequence Ventures, which is the CSIRO's um, venture capital. So you can see a bit of a theme here: all the government programs that we've we've gone through. Um, since then, we've uh, availed ourselves of the SA Export Development Grant. Um, we've also availed ourselves of uh, the EMDG, the Export Market Development Grant, the R&D Tax Offset. So we're very good at writing grants, but uh, <laughs> we're also quite good at working with our customers. So over that time, we've been building quite a, quite a solid customer base. Um, we're growing quite rapidly. Uh, we, by Christmas time, we'll be round about 40 employees between here and Arlington in Virginia. Um, and over the last 12 months, we've, uh, 12 months to so the last financial year, we increased our revenue by over five times. And this 12 months, we're targeting an increase of another four times. So things are going quite well for us. But yeah, grant junkie or poster child, it's up to you really. <laughs>
And so this 